Hey everyone, Ethan here from Extreme RC 4x4, and as you can see, I do have a new rig in the shop. Um, picked this up on Tuesday. Today's Thursday. Not sure what day you guys are gonna end up seeing the video, but um, I just thought I would show you guys what this is all about. Uh, as many of you know, this is the Element Enduro Trail Runner. Uh, it's the first Element Enduro to come from the factory with their uh, independent front suspension. It is still four-wheel drive though, and we do still get the overdrive transmission that the Element Enduro has always come with. So we can clearly see this is a Toyota 4Runner, but um, it is not licensed. So if you want to look at the box, this goes over some details. Uh, here is one of them with all of the modifications that you can make from the factory with this bumper, the snorkel, the roof rack, and then over here you can see how it looks out of the box. Uh, just looks like a pretty stock 4Runner. Not much else going on with the box So One of the cool things about the Element boxes though is that um, there is a garage so you can keep using the box as like a garage I'll see if I can figure out how to set that up another time but what you get here um, the owner's manual and there's a bunch of stickers on the sticker sheet in here some stuff like that I won't get too much into that but uh, as you can see, they did even do the TRD font, and it's their own Element RC, so might be pushing it a little bit with the licensing, so maybe something will happen, but most likely nothing. So here it is, the Element RC Trail Runner. So first impressions of it, I am pretty impressed. It's a really good looking truck. Um, if you're looking for one of the most scale vehicles out of the box, I feel like this is absolutely that. Uh, the independent front suspension on the real 4Runners and the solid rear axle, so the suspension matches the real truck. Um, and another thing that really makes this stand out as a scale vehicle to me is the width of the body actually almost entirely covers the tires. They do stick out just slightly, but really not much. So they definitely get points for that. Uh, some people will complain about the body pins, but I will suffer to see that the body pins come through the body for the ease of getting the body on and off or just how well the body is attached to the chassis so of course this isn't everything you want to see this plastic bumper does come off on the bottom uh, which I will be doing very shortly here it just comes off we have some molded details like the grill but the headlights aren't done the windshield wipers are separate pieces and the mirrors are included you just have to install them like I've done here but something that I really liked on this is that the windows are clear, but they have this tint over them. So you can't just see on the inside everything that's going on, but um, I'm sure if you wanted to see them as clear, you can just peel these stickers off. I'm not sure. I doubt that that is painted because the tint between the windows differs. So you can probably peel that off and have clear windows if you wanted to. We do have some nice sliders though, uh, kind of pulling a page out of the TRX4 book where the body does sit in a channel here. I think the TRX4 is the first to do that. The fenders are molded, which is a really nice touch, I think. Uh, all these little scale plastic details really help to take the Lexan rattle out of a lot of these bodies that we see anymore. Um, so it's just a very detailed body. Uh, on the back also the windshield wiper and we have kind of a spoiler going on, door handles, 
So lots of really nice scale touches on this, uh, as well as the exhaust back here. So I will let you guys know this is not how it comes out of the box. I have made some changes, uh, maybe just one. This battery tray, it comes with a short battery tray for a smaller LiPo pack but I installed this larger tray which is also included so you can run a full size battery like I typically do. So uh, just having a look at the drivetrain, the rear end is pretty much your typical <coughs> scale crawler um, but the rear end is lowered I believe. You have some separate mounts on the axle right there, those higher mounts. I think that's where the shocks sometimes mount uh, if you don't have the independent suspension because it's not a very tall sitting truck so um, the suspension may typically mount there and then you move the shock back but this is my first element enduro so uh, as you can see the exhaust is really well mounted back here I don't really feel like gonna break that but it is interesting that the whole shock tower actually is molded into this uh, mount that comes down here where the exhaust attaches so if you did want to remove the exhaust you may end up wanting to cut that off as well uh, just so you don't get hung up on it but it is pretty much right on top of the axle and of course uh, elements overdrive transmission this thing is absolutely huge when you compare it to the AX10 transmission that I like to run in my trucks but um, it'll be neat to experience overdrive. I still have not driven a truck with overdrive, but uh, this transmission is just absolutely thick compared to the AX10 transmission, which is what I'm used to typically looking at. So I guess that makes sense though, because you do have two sets of gears through there. And this is a 16 turn motor, but it's a five slot brushed motor. so. There's kind of some differences between the typical motors, which I think are three slot motors. Like this one is a 27 turn, so probably a decently quick motor for the scale trucks. But the 16 turn motor, I'm not really sure what that is gonna compare to right now. Um, we do have two plugs right here uh, for lights. I'll get into the extra included stuff in a second but um, steering servo is mounted here and then there's a linkage that runs underneath here that pushes forwards and backwards to run the rack and pinion steering up here but the IFS is very neat um, I think element did a great job on it especially that it's four-wheel drive uh, some of the when this whole independent suspension kind of started to take off last year um, there was a, a couple of them that you could get without four-wheel drive but those are more of a high travel suspension this isn't you don't get a ton of travel out of this compared to the i-beam suspension I think it is that somebody else was making online so very neat I really like this skid plate that we have going on here up to the IFS that's a really nice touch uh, protects the drive shaft but I'm sure it also helps slide over things as well some of the things that I noticed about it were these um, I don't know if you want to call them your axle shafts essentially but the drive shafts that go from the differential to the wheel itself do look pretty beefy and I have not heard of anyone having trouble with them but pretty much till this point this independent suspension has been an add-on part but this is the first truck where it's actually come factory so hopefully I can do some things with this independent suspension I have a few things in mind that I want to try but um, I guess that's all to come in the future. Let me grab the extra parts I have for this. 
So pretty typical nowadays, you do get um, an assortment of parts that come with your new trucks. One of those being this front bumper. You can run it just a center section and then um, leave the plastic on the stock body. However, uh, I'm gonna run a full bumper like this. I just, although the body is really thick and that bumper is pretty impressive for the thickness of it, uh, I just really prefer to have something that's chassis mounted. So that's why I'm gonna put this on here. And the other thing too, is that these, this LED light, the set of them too, is included uh, with the truck from the factory. So to run these lights, you have to have this bumper. I was not able to find a set of light buckets that go on the truck, um, in here at least. So to run these lights, I think you have to put this bumper on, uh, it screws together, two screws on each side, and it does feel like more of a rubbery plastic like you're not gonna break it you notice that when you're pulling things off the parts tree too you almost have to cut them off because it's such a flexible material it doesn't get uh, brittle and break which I guess is a good thing and we'll see how strong this bumper really turns out to be a little concerning on these ends here but it is a three-piece bumper and not just one molded piece so I guess we do have to keep that in mind some of the other parts that are included uh, there is another set of gears for the transmission to change the ratio. I think these come with uh, the middle of the road on them. It has overdrive, but it's not the maximum overdrive, um, but it's also not one to one. So if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, overdrive, basically the front axle spins faster than the rear. It's supposed to help with the turning radius and climbing up hills because the front end is essentially pulling the rear, but just slightly. I found it almost kind of comical that this front axle housing is included because the axle housing is here, but you don't have a differential cover and you don't have the the ends for the axle to put the knuckles on so the C hubs sorry you don't have any C hubs to put the axles on with so this piece is pretty useless the rear end is a different design it goes all the way out to the end so I'm not sure why this piece is included maybe it was on one of these parts trees but interesting nonetheless this is the smaller battery tray that is included on the truck that I have changed out. Um, I just don't really run small lipos unless I'm competing. Uh, you have some rod ends, a bunch of ball joints in here, uh, some body posts, and your bag of hardware. And there's also some orange o-rings included in there. I guess in case you need to rebuild the shocks is what I'm assuming that's for, but um, all the hardware was in there to put the bumper together. Uh, only thing that I also found missing was there's no pieces to hold the LED lights into the bumper. So you get the bumper and you get the lights, but there's no pieces to hold these lights into the bumper. So I actually had to use some axial pieces in order to do that. Uh, the rest of this is, this is the cross member um, if you're running the solid axle and then this is the roof rack that can go onto the body I'm not sure if I'm gonna put it on or not yet. I do like it though. It's a pretty slim design Which I like uh, you also get this snorkel here that goes onto the body um, All the locations that need to be drilled on the body to make this happen are dimpled from what I've seen so you just need to take a body reamer and drill all those dimples out. But now I'm going to go ahead and install this bumper because I wanted to keep working on this truck, but I figured you guys would want to see how it looks. It does look good, but um, knowing myself, I'll want to drive this and um, it'll just kill me to see 
uh, this bumper getting pushed on, although it may actually be stronger than what is on this plastic bumper here. Uh, give it a feel. One thing I notice already is the body doesn't necessarily like to fall into the channels on the rock sliders. I don't know if that's something I still need to get used to or what, but... I don't know. I want to put this bumper on so I can have lights. That's my grievance. So, in order to do that, uh, the body has these plastic washer deals. And you need to pull the one off on the end, right here, right there, and the other end. And then this plastic bumper will come off. But there's also some double-sided tape in here. So just pull it off. Hopefully without cracking anything. All right, so. There you have it, that is the front bumper. Just need to pull this double sided tape off of here. And then we are gonna have to do some trimming on these molded fenders. And there is a line in there for us to make the cut, so shouldn't be too bad. I guess we can make that cut just right now. I'm going to use Dremel, but whatever means you choose to use, please be careful. No, I was not able to find a set of these fenders that are already made to go on here. permanent modification has been made. There's no going back now. From here it's pretty easy. I'm just gonna, these two screws on the bottom of this skid plate, we have to pull out. It is easier if you have an electric screwdriver though. Alright, so I'm going to put the body back on just so that I can get this bumper set correctly. I'm going to put the wires in first and then the bumper and now we'll be able to set it. So I'm going to try to bring it in as far as I can. It seems like it kind of bottoms out. We might actually just be able to put it in as far as it goes. A quick 
check. I don't see a hole. Okay, so this is as far in as the bumper will go right now, but I would be willing to bet that if you cut this push bar off of here, you would get a super slim fitting bumper. Just move it in one more. I'm kind of tempted to try that uh, just to get a really nice tight fit up here. Uh, that would be awesome, but I don't know if I'm going to go that far yet. Um, I guess only thing with the bumper is if I was the one designing the bumper, I would have made it come out to be even with the fenders so that the fenders kind of rest on top of the bumper, but um, that's just something that I would do, not a major complaint. Um, let's plug a battery into this thing. I do think I'm gonna get some zip ties out uh, before I take this out on the trail because some of these wires are actually looking like they're in contact with this front drive shaft. So um, just something to keep in mind if you get one of these to zip tie those wires so that they're not touching the drive shaft. It probably won't cause any major issues, but it could end up either wrapped around the drive shaft or worn through by the drive shaft. And Nobody wants any electrical problems, so. Oh, the remote for the truck. I cannot tell you how much I don't like these remotes. <laughs> they really did a great job with the truck, but remote selection, um, honestly, I cannot give them points for that. I'm sure some people will say there's I'm sure some people will say there's no reason to be hard on element because it is a ready to run but um, these are the remotes that they provide with the CR12 as well and it is a major upgrade in low speed control just by replacing the remotes so um, I typically replace these remotes with like 10 year old axial ready to run remotes because um, those are actually a really big improvement on these so if you are getting this truck and you do want some low speed control uh, you're having issues with it just changing the remote sometimes will make a huge difference so I guess we'll see on this one if we have low speed control or not hmm? It's a little bit quick in reverse, but um, going forwards, it does seem to be fine. So, um, from my experience with the CR12, I may still end up trying to uh, put a different remote in here just to see how good the low speed control is on this motor and ESC. Um, because if the low speed control is actually this good on this remote, um, either they change your, something with the remote or um, more than likely this is a really good motor in ESC so let me put it on the floor and see what this looks like okay so 
to me. Uh, this motor runs really smooth. It's very quiet. The drivetrain is quiet on my just limited drive. I just want to see what this speed would compare to. Probably comparable to like a 35 turn motor. Um, 35 turn regular brush motor, not a five slot one like this, but seems very smooth. Should be a really fun truck. Um, I may end up putting in this uh, Holmes Hobbies 27 turn and get a little bit more speed out of this one. Uh, since we do a competitive class here occasionally, that is based off of time, so we actually race uh, these scale trucks, which is actually a lot more fun than you would think it is. So uh, with the IFS suspension, that's kind of what I want to do with this, um, just take advantage of that high speed capability. But um, I am gonna play with it for a little while like it is before I make any major changes. Um, these lights do look really good though. They remind me of like uh, Xenon lights or whatever. They're kind of blue, but that is very cool. I am pretty impressed with this truck out of the box. Uh, the build quality is really nice. These links look really nice and um, the drive shafts, I don't know about this silver detail, but it is something they do. The only thing I might really wish for is an option for a, a rear bumper to be included of a similar style, just because I like chassis mounted bumpers. And I understand what they were trying to do by making this uh, bumper modular where you have the center and the end sections. And they did a really good job designing how they come together to give it as much strength as they could. But at the end of the day, I would prefer it to be just one large molded bumper and then maybe include the center section as well if they really felt like it. Um, I don't know. Little critiques like that that I would say are going to end up getting replaced by some aftermarket bumpers eventually. Since this is a brand new truck on the market though, uh, we'll really have to wait and see what comes out for these. Um, I'm just looking forward to trying the independent front suspension, something very new and uh, should be a lot of fun to play with. So I'll keep you guys updated on any troubles I have with this. I'm likely not going to have any because uh, the enduro platform has been out for a while and the independent suspension has also been out for a while. Um, this is just the first time they're really being combined into a ready to run truck. And I think the Forerunner body is an excellent choice. Um, some people might say do a Tacoma, but the Tacoma bodies are already out there. And the other thing as well is to make a Tacoma of a similar wheelbase and scale to this, it would need to be a much longer truck. Um, unless they did like a single cab, then yeah. So what I'm talking about is really when you make something longer, it also needs to become wider. So um, I really like how this body fits on the chassis, I guess is what I'm trying to say. The width looks really nice. Um, it's a really scale truck and I think that's good. The market is really heading that way these days. And if you want something that just looks really scale, I think this is the truck for you. Um, I can't wait to get out and drive it guys. I'll try and get a video together for you, but tons of scale accessories included with this for, I paid $390 for it. I'm not sure what it's going for online. The local hobby shop just had them in. So I went and picked one up as soon as I could. Um, another thing too, I think these are actually beadlock wheels that you get on here. I'm pretty sure they're beadlock wheels. So another cool thing, um, really awesome. I think Element is doing an awesome job for being such a new brand to the hobby. Although uh, Team Associated is kind of the mothering brand. Um, I think Element is really doing some awesome innovative things and I can't wait to have a chance to play with this truck. So anyways guys, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.